there. Welcome to Bayside Church Online. I am joined by my best friend and the giant mascot at Bayside Church, Fiegel the Eagle. <laughs> Fiegel has been around Bayside for a long time and he's well known for his awesome high fives. And he's also been a little bit sad recently because he hasn't been able to hang out with the kids at Bayside Church. So he's been learning a new skill, haven't you? Fiegel has his own YouTube channel called Fiegel Tales, and it's so funny. If you know of anyone that could do with a smile, or maybe you yourself, you should check it out. <laughs> if this is your first time to Bayside, we are so glad you joined us, but we'd like to get to know you better. So please, could you complete the online connection card for us? And maybe you could share this video on YouTube or Facebook. Fiegel, we're going to join the worship team now. But before we do, let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to worship together, Lord. Thank you that you can touch people wherever they are right now watching this service today. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Let's worship together. Hi, church. Why don't you all be upstanding as we sing together? Let's rejoice in Jesus today.
thank you, worship team, for that incredible time of leading us into a deeper sense of God's presence. We're going to continue worshiping now with our giving. So if you want to take, get your tithes and offering ready, you can give via the PushPay app or the online giving button on the website or Facebook. Hey, Fiegel, I'm sharing a familiar story today from the Bible. You might actually know it. It's about a faithful family that had gotten into some hard times, so much so that it left a widow, two sons, and a large amount of debt. And this single parent was really concerned that her children would be enslaved to pay off the debt. So you know what she did? The little bit that she had, she brought it to the Lord. A small jar of olive oil that even back then wasn't worth very much. But you know what? God sees beyond what she brought and he saw her heart. He saw a parent that wanted to rescue her children from enslavement. And that resonated with God's heart for us. And through that small act of obedience and faith, God made a miracle of multiplication happen. God is in the business of blessing, transforming and multiplying. Even what we think is insignificant is precious to God. So as you take your offering into your hand today, just know that God knows your situation and He knows your heart. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you that you see each giver's heart here today. You see their situation and you know their heart. Lord, I pray that just as in this story, you can bring a miracle of multiplication here today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you, family, for your amazing generosity. Let's hear a message from Pastor Sandra now. Thank you, Anita and Fiegel. So great to see you. I highly encourage if you haven't subscribed to Fiegel Tales to please do so on YouTube and Facebook. There's so such great content there. I've even watched it and it's just brought me so much joy. Great content for the kids and uh, to learn about God. So highly recommend that you get along and subscribe to those channels. Well, it's great to bring the Word of God here today with you. And uh, several months ago, I shared a message just before the pandemic started uh, about how to build trust under pressure. And we took a look at the story of Jesus and his disciples as they were weathering this massive storm. You might remember the story, Jesus is fast asleep and the disciples are, are fearful that their lives are going to end in that storm. But we took a look at how Jesus built trust under pressure. Well, life has changed dramatically even since then. We're five months into this pandemic and we're living in such a, such a weird situation, living in the first time with a curfew here in Melbourne. Never before in our state's history have we, have we lived with these conditions. We're all having to bear down and bunker down and, and cope with the current pa pandemic. As we ushered into 2020, I don't think anyone would have imagined that this is what 2020 would have looked like. Certainly I didn't. Uh, here's a photo of me with my nephew, uh, Luca, on New Year's Eve, ready to usher into this new decade. If you had said to me that eight months from now that I would be uh, living under curfew, wearing a face mask when I go out, not being able to venture out more than five kilometres, I would have seriously thought you, uh, you would be joking. But here in this, in this photo that I've just shown you, um, I was very much ready to say goodbye to 2019 because 2019 had its challenges. And I was looking optimistically into 2020, ready full of hope and promise. I was ready to say goodbye to those difficult things. I've since learnt that every year has its challenges. And uh, it's not necessarily about mastering and trying to understand those challenges. It's more about trying to respond to the challenges that come. But that's a completely another message that I'd like to share with you another time. We're there to just to, to respond to what the master is wanting us to do in the given moment when we face certain challenges. But like most people, my plans for 2020 have had to change as we've had to cope with the unexpected. We're all living through the most tumultuous time globally. 
For those that have lived in particularly war-torn war countries or perhaps have come from developing nations, I think you might be a step ahead uh, for most of us because you've understood the uncertainty of life or perhaps you've learnt some lessons about endurance. And certainly we're having to learn some things about endurance right now. Poignantly, this weekend marks the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. There may be some people in our congregation who remember what it was like to live through that time. It was seven years of great upheaval, psychological, social and economic impact, and not to mention the horrors of World War II, the Holocaust and all the people that perished. My parents were children when World War II took place and they remember the rationing of food, the lack of jobs and security, the uncertainty of life. My, I think about my grandmother who was born in 1912 and at the age of six she died, her, her mother died of Spanish flu during World War I. Ten years later from there, uh, Italy was affected by the Great Depression and then she had my father in 1934, just before World War II started. If she was alive today, I would ask her a thing or two about living through uncertain times. Personally for myself, I've lived through a couple of recessions, but the one I truly remember is in 1990 and 91. Uh, unemployment here in Australia was around 11% and I was just finishing VCE and we were pretty much told that, you know, uni placements were slim because everyone was going back to uni to upskill. And so it was just, the messaging was, you know, just get into any course you want, you could. Don't worry about what you want, just try and get into a course. Of course, I didn't want to just do any course. I wanted to get into the thing that I desired. It was living with uncertainty about what the future held. It's hard right now to see what the future is going to look like. Uh, we are living in very uncertain times and it's important to glean from history. This isn't the first time we've lived with uncertainty. On a recent morning walk, uh, I, the mood of the morning was quite foggy. It was a typical um, winter morning in Melbourne. And uh, as I was looking around, I just felt that the mood of the morning spoke to me about what we're currently living through. And that is a deep fog. Now, fogs are just simply uh, clouds that touch the ground. But the thing about fogs is that it hampers our ability to see. And a couple of years ago, I took this photo of the, whilst I was in the Yarra Valley, uh, of this fog that just came over the, over the valley. And you will see that right now on the screen. Um, it was something quite peculiar because it also made the fog purple. Uh, the sky was purple, so it's, it was quite a magical shot. You couldn't see very much ahead. But then there's another shot of what the valley actually looks like when the fog lifted. And uh, you'll see the, the vineyards, the panorama, the horizon, the valley all below, quite different picture altogether. And just as I unpacked with you the metaphor of a storm, today what I want to do is unpack how we can navigate through fogs, how we can navigate through uncertain times. What does God require of us in this time of uncertainty? I believe it's a great time of deepening our faith. And as people of faith, we, can I say, we are made for this. We are made for times that we can't see. Hebrews 11.2 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. So when everything is foggy and uncertain, the actions we take are incredibly important. And so I want to share just three key points with you today about how we can navigate through these times. The first is wait and be patient. In fogs, you need to, be, you need to move very slowly uh, and carefully. If you're in a car, it's probably the best thing is to stop and wait it out. Uh, it's best not to rush forward through a fog. Proverbs 14.29 says, A patient person shows great understanding, but a quick-tempered one promotes foolishness. Now, I've confessed this to you before. Patience, I have to say, isn't my greatest virtue. I do have some and I'm developing the rest. I'm hopefully getting better at it as I practice it. But I'll admit to you, I've been influenced by the culture that I live in. We live in a very fast-paced culture. 
We expect things instantly. We want what we want when we want it. And if we reflect on that, that's not a very godly attitude. We live in a world of fast food, express checkouts, instant clicks, quick text messages. Even a first date has been reduced to, and I apologise for the crudity, a quickie, if you know what I mean. Where do we learn to wait? Coming out of this first lockdown, we were quick to get back into normal life as much as we could. And as a result, particularly here in Victoria, we've furthered the spread of the pandemic. In the Bible, there are over 160 references about being patient and waiting. And so that's no small thing. That's God wanting to get our attention about the importance of it. There is something we can learn in waiting and being patient. Faith requires us to be patient. Love is patient. If we want to be full of faith in these times, if we want to love God and love others in these times, it requires us to be patient and it requires us to wait on God. Waiting forces us to pay attention to the things that we neglect, the things that we neglect that we're too busy to pay attention to. Psalm 47.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Other translations say, stop your fighting and know that I am God. And I find that quite interesting that often when we're caused to wait, we become frustrated and agitated and we fight within ourselves and maybe we fight with others and we we make hasty moves. Acting impatiently and making hasty moves out of frustration or agitation only leads to havoc and destruction. There are times that we do need to move quickly and need to be agile, for sure. But then there are also times when we need to wait and to be patient. And I believe this is one of those times when we need to listen and wait on God and hear what he's wanting us to do in this moment, in the present moment. James 5.8 says, You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts because the Lord's coming is near. We need to gird ourselves in God in this time. And waiting and being patient and and learning to listen to him, this is the place that we can do that. We go deeper in God as we wait for him to do his perfect work in this time. The second point I want to share with you is to be alert and focused. In a fog, you actually need to be alert and very, very focused. And in uncertain times, these are the perfect times that that the enemy wants to take advantage of. And so rather than him take advantage, we want to take advantage and take ground. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now, this scripture isn't to freak us out. It's it's there to, to make us aware and to be alert to the way the enemy works. And I like to say the fact that this scripture points out that the devil is like a roaring lion. But if we follow Jesus, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah and I want to follow his voice. So this may be a time of uncertainty, a time of vulnerability and the enemy loves to tempt and devour in these times. He loves to look at our point of vulnerability and look for opportunities. Now we need to be aware of our key vulnerabilities, what I call our Achilles heel. What is that thing that brings us undone? Perhaps they're fears or areas that we like to control. Where does this current isolation take you in your mind? These waiting periods brings to the fore what God is wanting to bring our attention to. And ultimately, if we pay attention to it, he desires for us to bring that vulnerability to him. Awareness and self-reflection is everything. Am I drawing close to God in this time? Or am I drawing closer to the voice of the enemy? We need to pay attention to the voice of of which we are following. The enemy's task is to bring us under his standard, under his modus operandi, and that is to bring us to a, a place of greater fear. God's way is always to bring us into a greater place of freedom and love. And so the best thing we can do as we pay attention to those things that God brings to the surface is to surrender that thing to him and to ask for his grace and his help. We don't need to fear this. 1 John 4, 8 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. 
The one who fears is not made perfect in love. In this time of lockdown, I've been personally aware of some areas in my life that I'm wanting to control. And so rather than moping about it, rather than getting down on myself about it, I've surrendered that time in my prayer time to God. And I've asked for his help in the process and asked for him to help me to uh, surrender that and to, and to be strengthened by him in the process. We all have areas. None of us are exempt from having areas that we need to work on. But are we aware? Being aware enables us to move forward with greater freedom. Galatians 5 1 says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Our, at the moment, our freedom has been restricted in, in the sense of being able to move around physically. But can I encourage you, it does not mean that we have to be restricted spiritually. We can be free spiritually. Let's not allow the enemy to rob our freedom, but rather let's allow God to take us into greater areas of freedom. The third and final point that I want to share with you is turn the light on. In a fog, particularly if you're in a car, the best thing to do is turn your hazard lights on. Foggy times are confusing. It's hard to see how to move ahead. And so it's, it's living in a grey zone and there can be danger ahead. So the best thing is to turn the lights on and to alert others in the process. Jesus described himself as the light of the world. More than ever, I believe we need to experience Jesus and his truth. John 8 12 says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. In John 1, Jesus is also described as the word and that word became flesh. The word is another way, of, is also described as light. In Psalm 119, 105, it says, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Interestingly, Jesus is also described as a, as a rock and a living stone. And so I want you to think about that, the concept of the stability of a rock and the clarity of, rock, of light. These are the things that, are, that are, des are describing who Jesus is. So my question to you is, what are you standing on at this moment and is it bringing light? Are we standing on the truth of who Jesus is and what he represents? Or, we are standing, or are we standing on something that is not true? I want to give you an example because I believe fogs bring to the fore what it is that we are holding on to, what we are standing on as truth. So an example would be, if we believe in following Jesus, we won't experience any suffering or pain, that somehow we are exempt from experiencing any trials and tribulations and hard times, then can I say that we are going to be disappointed and disillusioned. We will become uncertain about who Jesus is. If, however, we believe that in following Jesus, in following his way, that we too will likely experience pain and suffering, trials and tribulations, even death, that death does not have the final say, that there is resurrection coming, that there is hope, then despite what we go through, we can stand on the truth of who Jesus is. Our, we won't be shaken to the core. We will all go through trials and tribulations. So what we stand on as truth matters. What living word is God giving to you right now that you can stand on and be that light? Ephesians 6.13 says, Therefore, put on the full armour of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you've done everything, to stand. The armour is made up of faith, the word, discernment, righteousness. We're ready with the, with the gospel of peace to share that. This is a time to stand firm in who we are as children of God and who we are following, and that is Jesus, and to rely on him and lean into him like never before to learn from him and his example and to follow that way. This is a time to know Jesus more fully, to know his word and to let it grip our hearts so that we can be that light to others. 
In wrapping up, I just want to share with you that the thing about fogs is that eventually they do lift. This COVID situation will too lift. When, I, I can't say. We will, however, get through this situation and we will re rebuild. We are going through a time of deep uncertainty and we need to be prayerful. But God is still God. This is a time for God to do a deep work in us and around us. And it requires us to be patient. It requires us to be focused and alert to what God wants us to do in, an, in every single day. And it requires us to stand firm on his truth and not to be shaken. Because when we do, then we can be that light to others and to show them the way forward. 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says, We don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog peering through a mist, but it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then, see it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing him directly, just as he knows us. I wanna give you an opportunity right now, if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, that you can invite him in today. Jesus died on the cross for you, for everything that you've ever done wrong. He died a gruesome death, but death did not have the final say. He rose again on the third day. Now you might not know what that means right now, and the fullness of that, but Jesus is asking and tapping on your heart to see whether you would like to journey with him. And he will bring you through every situation. If you would like to start that journey, right now in the chat, we have some hosts who are posting a link and we would love to get in touch with you provide you with a Bible and to help you start that journey of knowing Jesus and following him. As mentioned earlier in this uh, message, this weekend marks the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. I want to leave with you this video as it commemorates those who served in World War II, but also to remind us of the joy that this too, this situation that we're in right now, will also pass and will also end. God bless. Fellow citizens, the war is out. The letter B is going round the world today. Everybody knows it, everybody shows it. A little symbol to repeat in every way Before victory all the way Say it, sing it, play it, swing it Before victory Tap it, talk it Australia joins her allies in an outburst of rejoicing The like of which her cities have never seen before the pent-up emotion of six years poured out as a flood. Freedom was really theirs. win, win, win. So say it, play it, sing it, swing it, be for victory. Thanks for that amazing message, Sandra. Isn't it great that we get to meet online and hear great biblical truth? Fiegel, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> You know, Fiegel is in a connect group. And if you'd like to join a connect group, you can email connect at baysidechurch.com.au. It sounds like Fiegel wants to hang out with you. Pastor Rob and Christy also have a Q&A on Tuesday nights. How good is that, Fiegel? If you are grappling with any faith questions, you can hang out with them and ask them yourself. We love seeing all the ISOFUN videos and photos that you've been posting. Look at this great one from the Richardsons. That's so funny. Those masks are epic. They've brought so much joy to us already. And it's another great way to stay connected to your church family. Here's one that Fiegel and his friends did. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is our friend and our help. That is so good to know. Fiegel is always my friend, but he can't always be with me but the Holy Spirit is always right there. Just like this balloon is sticking to my hair. That is hilarious. Have you ever had a balloon stick to your hair? Oh, Fiegel, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, this week, maybe you can learn a new skill like Fiegel and start a YouTube channel 
or do an ISOFUN video and hashtag BC ISOFUN and tag Bayside Church on Facebook or Instagram. We hope you have a blessed week and stick around and connect in the chat after the service. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Bye. <laughs>